IWF fans, welcome to the Rick Diesel Show. I am your host, Rick Diesel. We got a great show for you for, for episode two. We're going to go down for a very special interview with my very special guest, Mr. Brian Danzig. We're going to get to that right here shortly. But first off, I want to uh, I want to address something to a very special person out in TIWF, Hot Rod. Brother, I read your Hot Rod column the, this week and... Uh, and, and fans, if you want to read it, it's on the affiliate news page right here on AIWFWrestling.net. And I, I, I think everyone of you should go and read that because it's it's actually a pretty good column this week. And, and I just want to say, Hot Rod, man, I feel your pain. I know exactly what you're going through. I've been there, having to deal with the with the guys in the back and their egos, and and they get to where they think they're big superstars, and and they and they can do whatever they want to, and. And they think that the people just come to see them because of who they are, and they don't have to work as hard. Well, a lot of the veterans in this business don't understand it. That behind every bush out there, behind somewhere in the crowd, there's a there's a there's an aspiring star waiting to take your place. Those young lines, those young guys in the dressing room that's sitting there, and you look over at them, and they're sitting there tying their boots, and you think, look at that snot-nosed punk kid. You know, he he goes out there and busts his ass every night, and. And he'll never be what I am. Well, you know what, fellas? He will be. And Hot Rod's right. AIWF is coming. We are coming to Trenton, Tennessee on March 14th. The champions are coming. And we're going to be taking a look at what you guys have out there. So everybody better be on their toes. Hot Rod, you're right, man. The egos just get unbearable. It's like a daycare sometimes. But I tell you what. You veterans, I know. I've been there. I've been in the wrestling business for 22 years. Been with AIWF since day one, 17 years ago. There's always somebody out there ready to take your place, fellas. You better stay on your game. Hot Rod, you do what you have to do to keep order out there. You do what you have to do that, that you feel is right in your mind. And if it requires doing something that the fans don't like, well, brother, that's just the way it has to be. And as long as you can sleep at night, that's all you have to worry about. Don't worry about what the fans say. Don't worry about what they think. You worry about you and what you think's right in your mind and in your heart. That's what you have to worry about, Hot Rod. I'm proud of you, man. It, uh, it, it's not always about what the fans want. Sometimes you have to look beyond them. That's all I have to say to Hot Rod out in TIWF. You stand strong, brother. Okay. Now. My very special guest this week on the Rick Diesel Show is Brian Danzig. And we went to his home as invited guests, believe it or not, which don't happen often with the Brian Danzig family. But uh, we went to his home so I could sit down and have a chat with Brian Danzig about a lot of things going on in the AIWF. And we're going to take and go out to his house right now for this very special interview with my very special guest, Brian Danzig. Hello wrestling fans, I am Rick Diesel, welcome to the Rick Diesel Show, and this week I am hanging out with Brian Danzig. How's it going, man? It's good to be here. We're, uh, actually, Brian has invited Rick Diesel and the wrestling fans into one corner of his house, and that's all you get. In one corner. That's, that's it. it. That's it. No more. Just be happy with that. Which is, for a lot of people, that's good enough. They've never oh, yeah. been inside the life of Brian Danzig. Yeah, but, but there, like, there have been several have just been in the corner, though. Oh, we, we won't go into that. No, I'm no, because the, anyway, uh, but I can describe it to you. Pretty cool. I mean, yeah, there's there's posters and there's and it's, it's it's Brian Danzig's world, that's for sure. So you don't know what you're missing. Well, I said this is all you get. But anyway, I uh, thank you for uh, letting us come into your home and and kind of hang out with you this week. This is something that I like doing, Rick Diesel. Show. I like to get away from the studio, so to speak, and. And get out and meet the fans. And oh, by the way, uh, coming hopefully pretty soon on the Rick Diesel Show, we're going to start doing some uh, at the shows with the fans. So if you guys like that idea, AIWF20 at hotmail.com. Let us know what you think of that idea, doing the Rick Diesel Show with some fans at the shows. So uh, let's just talk. We'll just talk about stuff. All right. <laughs> All right, first off, uh, since I've done the last Rick Diesel show, we've got some new affiliates, right? Uh, which NCWA was working its way in, uh, SCWA, which is restarting in Wentworth, North Carolina. You, you worked for them some, I think, back when they were 
years ago when yeah. they were doing their thing down there? Yeah, I, yeah, I've uh, wrestled with them a couple of times. And they're going to be starting back up in Wentworth, North Carolina, which, by the way, they've got a big show coming up. Uh, it's the uh, John Chilton Memorial Show. They do it once a year. Right. Uh, I, I, I knew John briefly. I don't know if you ever met him. No, no I did. <laughs> it's Memorial Show Saturday, uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day. So take the one you love out to see SCW wrestling at Wentworth Armory. So I'll have to go out there and just the uh, John Chilton Memorial Show. It'll be pretty good. It'll be pretty good. And uh, if you want to know more details about that, uh, SCWA on my uh, MySpace. I'm not sure if I have MySpace yet or not. But, I don't know. but uh, anyway, there's some details about it on the website here on AIWFWrestling.net. Okay. Brand new affiliate, AIWF Texas Championship Wrestling. I'm excited about these oh, guys. Oh, yeah, me Texas. too. Because they took the AIWF name. And they've made AIWF Texas Championship Wrestling. Now, on April 10th, I'm not sure if you checked out, uh, but you can see more details on that. Uh, just go to the link right here on the main page, AIWFWrestling.net, and you can uh, check out AIWF Texas Championship Wrestling. They're going to crown the first AIWF Texas Heavyweight Champion on April 10th in Tyler, Texas. Oh, yeah, it's very exciting. AIWF slowly but surely reaching, reaching its way across the country. So what do you think about Adam Page? I mean, not Adam Page, but Adam Action. He's in Texas now. He's moved back to Texas. Mm -hmm. He's out there. I, okay. <clears throat> Adam Action, Big Daddy Edwards, as you know, at a show we just had recently, had a shot at a Extreme Impact in Mountain, North Carolina on uh, the 24th of January for the AWF Tag Team title. Adam Action, injured, gone, left for the state of Texas not to come back, and now Chuck King and uh, Big Daddy Edwards are the tag team champions. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I mean, it's a, um, it's a great opportunity for um, Edwards and Chuck King. You know, uh, Chuck is a um, very accomplished tag team wrestler. I don't think uh, Edwards could have found a much better partner, and uh, I think they proved that uh, that night by actually taking the titles away. Exactly. Now, the, that show on the 24th of January was basically the kickoff show for, for AIWF Anarchy, right. which is going to be based in Mount Airy, North Carolina. Uh, you were in Anarchy, and, I, and I've got to ask you about this. This is one of the main reasons I was, I was real excited about getting this interview. Uh, somebody else is going to be in Anarchy, and this is an issue that hasn't been brought up in a while, but there's, there's a gentleman who's he's on a... On a I guess say a part-time basis with Anarchy because he's based out of EWC in Tennessee, but Chains right. is is in Anarchy, and he's going to be making some appearances there. And I don't even I'm not sure if you and Chains have even come face to face since the incident in Mount Airy late last year, or no, it was been over a year yeah, where he he injured you, and he put you out for a while. Right. Actually, uh, I saw him one more time uh, against my doctor's order, of course. Um, went up to Tennessee to him, had one more match with him, and just during the match, I just I just blacked out, and next thing I knew, I was laying through a table. You know, and uh, after that, you know, I, I knew I had to uh, take some time off, you know, you know and... Uh, and recover. Well, I know that, you know, like I said, this is kind of, it, I don't know if it's really a dead issue, but it's been, it, it never really got resolved in a lot of people's minds because I don't know how many people remember Chains backstage on the phone with somebody right. who had paid him to come in and put you out of wrestling. Right. Uh, I mean, did you ever give any idea who that was? Or yeah. what's going to happen when you and Shane see each other again in Anarchy? Is it, is it a dead issue, or is it something that's still there? Well, it's it's definitely not a dead issue. Anytime you have somebody put you out of wrestling for, for months at a time, you you definitely have to um, own up and and uh, go go after them. You know, you can't you can't just let that slide. As far as it being personal, you know, I guess it'd be more of a personal issue with whoever it was that paid them, which for me, I mean, I've thought about it and I, I have quite a few enemies. I, you know, in my 15 years in the business, I've made quite a few enemies. So the, 
you know, just trying to sit down and figure out who that was, it, it's, it'd be impossible. Well, as, as many of the newer AIWF fans probably don't know, there was a time when you and Change were really tight in a, in a, right. in a group that I've actually been a part of uh, at one time back in the mid-90s, late-90s, the family. Right. And you and Change pretty much at one time run the family. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were there, he was your top guy. And you guys were very close, because I know, because I was close with both these guys myself. But, uh, but then to have Chains be the man that is paid to come in and go after you, it, it has to put a lot of weird things in your mind. It, it does, but um, w when you step back and think about it, he, he's the perfect choice. You know, he's, he's very tough. And not only that, you know, he's, he's smart and he knows, he, he probably knows as much about me as as anybody in the business that's still in the business today you know maybe bes except besides you maybe well i think it's going to be interesting to see what happens when brian Danzig and chains end up in anarchy awf anarchy now they're coming back to mount Airy on april the 18th and anarchy is basically the new hardcore uh, company in, uh, running under the awf banner uh that's that's kind of Based on the old AIWF, right. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving right along, I, I gotta get your I gotta get your opinion on another group uh, that's that hasn't had their first official show yet, and I guess they're going to be debuted on February the twenty first in Elkin, and that's C4W. Right now, Don Carson, as many people know, in the last episode of, of the Rick Diesel show, I talked to Don Carson, who was in the hospital, mm -hmm. done a lot of morphine. Right, uh, but. Uh, Don made the statement that he's going to run the C4W the way he sees it, or he's going to run it in the ground. Now, I know C4W, I, I don't know which direction the uh, the people who started C4W really had in mind for it, but Don Carson, during the draft, picked almost every mass wrestler that was available to be picked at the AWF, except for maybe uh, the Ninjas and uh, Anarchy Kid, I think, was the ones that he didn't get. But uh, how do you feel about this this group, C4W, a group of masked wrestlers? Well, uh, all under one banner. Uh, it's, it's an interesting concept. It's one that uh, I know um, I wouldn't, as, as a fan of wrestling, I wouldn't, I don't know that I'd be too interested in a group full of masked wrestlers. You know, having one, maybe two masked wrestlers on a show, you know, it, it is, it's interesting. You know, it gives them that kind of mystique. But when every, almost every wrestler has a mask on, you know, it kind of I think it kind of takes away uh, from the uh, from the mystery of you know when you do have those guys with the masks. Well, and, and also now, now don't forget that it's, it's not a company completely saturated with mask wrestlers. There's going right. to be wrestlers. Uh, right. Some of your favorite AWF stars will be on C4W shows, but the mask wrestlers are the banner wrestlers right. for C4W. Now, speaking of Elkin C4W, on February 21st, we've got a couple of guys coming in called uh, the Nigerian Nightmares. Now, if you haven't seen the video of these guys, go to the front page, awfwrestling.net, yes. click on the link to the Nigerian Nightmares, and just watch these guys in action. They are something to see, and if, if you're not in Elkin that night to watch these guys perform, AW still has not decided who's going to go up against these two guys over 300 pounds a piece right and they're agile they come off the top rope they flip over the ropes i mean they're like 300 pound high flyers yeah, what's your it, thoughts on that it's amazing i uh i feel sorry for the guys they do pick to go against them there aren't i mean as as big as some of the guys in the aiwf are i mean we're going to have to find some of our biggest guys just to almost match up to these. exactly yeah, and, and it's uh, like I said, it's going to be a tough time for anybody. You know, whether it's uh, uh, Big Daddy Edwards, you know, I'm sure he, he's uh, one they're thinking about. Um, Stephen Hayes, you know, you know, a couple of our uh, Stephen Dillinger would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, you know, we we have some. Right. Yeah, we have some. Going, like it, I said, we have several. Big but guys still, these stand. guys are. Right. I mean, some just watching the videos of these guys is amazing to me. It is. And they're making their way to the AWF and. And hopefully someday the AIWF will have an affiliate in Pennsylvania where they're from so we can get to see more of them. But, uh, okay, moving on. Shockwave, same night, 
New Bern Armory, New Bern, North Carolina, remix Vinny DiMucci Lumberjack match for the title that Remax remix just uh, at their last show in January, uh, January 10th, I think it was. Remix defeated Vinny DiMucci for the SCW, uh, SWE, Shockwave Wrestling Entertainment, uh, heavyweight title. And now, Lumberjack match. Uh, how much do you know about these guys? Uh, not a whole lot. You know, they're, they're newer. No, I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, looked them up too much. Well, Remix is, is, is uh, he's pretty popular down there. Vinny DiMucci uh, is not so much. Uh, and Vinny DiMucci's kind of run roughshod with that, with that title for a while. So it, you want to check that out. If you're in the New Bird area, go by and check that out. Uh, my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite wrestlers in the AWF right now is down there, Frankie Fontaine. Oh, Everybody knows I'm a big Frank. Don't ask me why, but I think any man who can strap a monkey to his crotch and walk through a crowd of people is is, is a hell of a man. Oh yeah, manish. <laughs> Frankie Fontaine is manish, uh -huh. but I got to give him credit for being brave. Okay, let's move around a little bit. Uh, EWC, Johnson City, Tennessee, the 28th of uh, February. They're having their annual war game. And two cages. You've been in matches like that before. What can fans expect to see at the Legion Street Rec Center in a War Games match, two cages that night? Carnage. That's what you can expect. It's it's a it's a very violent match. It's, like I said, not only do you have one cage, but it's basically two cages. You know, two rings, two cages, and when you get that many people in fighting. At, at the same time, it's 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 going to be a mess. It's it's great. It ought to be interesting. That's that's coming up. Legion Street right now. The, now the EWC title is still up for grabs, and I think in March uh, they were going to do it in January, but in March they're finally going to determine the new EWC heavyweight champion. Uh, I'm not sure the date, it, uh, but just keep it on AIWWrestling.net. The EWC link you can go to their MySpace page and check all that out. But that's Legion Street Rec Center on the 21st of February. You don't want to miss that. But I tell you what, we're going to take a break, and uh, we'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Visit King's Hot Dogs in Village Square Plaza in Rural Hall and tame your savage hunger.
show them here in, a, in the lovely home of Brian Danzig. It, it's a nice place, but you don't want to get caught wandering around in it. That's no. all I can say. That's all I can say. Okay. Now, uh, let's let's move around a little bit more. We've been talking about something, and I want to get back to more Brian Danzig here shortly. But let's get this other stuff out right. of the way. Uh, the the Texas AWF Texas Championship Wrestling. They're they're having a for the uh, a tournament on April the 10th to crown the very first AWF Texas Heavyweight Champion. Uh, I, I, I think I want to get back to that later because so I really don't know a lot about the guys. But mm -hmm. how do you feel about the our Texas affiliates? I mean, now that we have affiliates in Texas, AWF Texas and, and Full Effect Wrestling, these guys had Full Effect. I've been watching, so you know I've been keeping an eye on them. They're they got some really really good talent out there. This whole group is out there is kind of mixed in and, and kind of connected to Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy uh -huh. that was running in Texas. Right. So they get a lot of talent from there. How, how do you feel about the, the Texas scene? Oh, well, I think it's great. I think uh, anytime that we can branch out and get uh, more uh, promotions involved with the IWF, I think, uh, I think the better. I agree. Now, now TIWF, Trenton, Tennessee, uh, those guys have had a lot of crazy stuff. Here's my opinion of TIWF. And now, I, I know they got some, they just come off this major, major attempted takeover by an outlaw group called uh, the XOW. Mm -hmm. And they, they weathered that storm. But I just feel like that out in, in Tennessee right now, I think the TIWF is really giving a lot of favoritism to a guy named Chico Mendoza. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think they're giving him title shots that he hasn't really. I just don't think he's really earned them, and I think it's all because he's got this uh, this Mexican heritage that everybody's so big on being politically correct about right now. I, I don't know how you feel about that. Well, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't, uh, I haven't really kept up with the TIW that much, but I know uh, what you're talking about, uh, you know, with the um, the heavyweight title situation there, and and sometimes I don't know if it's so much that he's Hispanic, or if it's that he's just popular, a lot of times groups will give a push to the more popular wrestler, where as, as opposed to the uh, to the best. I still, I don't know. I, I I know that's a I know that's a big thing in wrestling that, that they will give. I mean, John Cena mm -hmm. is a prime example. Right. Hulk Hogan was a prime example. Exactly. Uh, of of somebody getting a push that had no wrestling skills whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, so you may be right. Personally, I think he just does a real good job gardening for the promoter. <laughs> I may be wrong, but I just feel like he does a real good job gardening for the promoter. Hey, and that's probably what, what got the whole thing going. But at night, have you seen Way Cool? Oh, yes. Does Way Cool not look like Rick Diesel 10 years ago? He does. It's amazing. Is that not awesome? Yes. I gotta get. I gotta find. I gotta get these people to wear us a find a picture of Waco. He's cut his hair now. Oh. But I mean, you know, if you're gonna be like Rick Diesel, you might true. as well just follow the trend. Yeah, exactly. But I gotta get an old picture of me and an old picture of Waco before he cut his hair. Put them side by side. It just blows people's minds because I mean, I've never had a Rick Diesel impersonator before. I'm kind of, I'm kind of flattered. You know what they say? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So yeah, you keep is. it up, Waco. That's how you become uh, a big shot in this business. Okay, uh, I, I, I want to take a time. I always told everybody that if they will send in their, their emails, AIWF20 at Hotmail.com, we will talk about what you want us to talk about, and that's what we're going to do right now is I got an email. Uh, this is from Mike. I won't use last names unless you ask me to. This is from Mike, and uh, Mike's uh, email was, first off, I would like to say thank you for letting the fans have access to you and letting us give your comment, or, or give you comments and topics, which I think is a great idea. Oh yeah, it is because I mean that's that's who you're appealing to. If if the fans are happy, then they're not going to be there. If they're not going to be there, there's no reason to even do it in the first place. Exactly. So, on with the mail. My first comment would be an idea that he, that this guy posted this, and I like this. He posted on the form and said a yearly tournament including all affiliates for each company would have qualifying matches and each would have one person move to the finals and then at one of the AIW's major events 
They could have a free-for-all where the winner gets a shot uh, at his choice, win up, or whatever brand, a title of whatever brand uh, he chooses, a title shot, basically. It's kind of like a, a Vince McMahon's Money in the Bank match. Right. But it's on a much, much wider scale. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I, I, I like it. Oh, yeah, I think it's a good idea, except uh, maybe uh, instead of a title of their choice, which I, I wouldn't see why this wouldn't be their choice, but the, uh, the AIWF title. Yeah, I agree. You know, because I mean that's that is the you know whoever holds which which is currently is Jimmy Love, um, Jimmy Love is the heavyweight champion of the AIWF. All of these uh, promotions that are under the AIWF banner, he is their heavyweight champion right now. What well, and, and I really like this idea because it's not something that anybody. The AIWF has always been known for doing stuff nobody else does, exactly. and this is a great comment. And to be honest with you, Mike. It was kind of in the talks before that, uh, but it was just been mentioned. But you've really brought it to light here, and I honestly think that that it could happen. Mm -hmm. I really do. Okay. Uh, secondly, while I respect your opinion, Rick Diesel, I think Kenny and Buggy Boy are great wrestlers and have every right to hold the ZCW Tag Champ, uh, to be the ZCW Tag Champs or whatever belts they want. They won them in the first place, and I'm sure that they can defend them unless someone else screws them out of them. Okay. Um, Kenny and Buggy Boy is a very touchy subject for me, and I, and, and I wanted to wait to go into this because of this letter. I feel like that the ZCW is really playing favoritism. I don't think that two people, two men, who is obviously mentally insufficient to others around them has the right to even be in this business. What was that guy that Vince had, the goofy fella? Uh, Eugene. Eugene. Mm -hmm. now, I mean, what was his deal? He didn't need to be out there. Kenny and Buggy Boy don't need to be out there. I just, I feel like they have no place. This is a man's sport. This is not a sport for somebody to get out there who drools all over themselves. Who, they don't even know if the referee is counted to three. That's your opinion. Well, Rick, I'll have to uh, disagree with you on that one. I mean, uh, wrestling, while uh, it can be a very mental game, uh, you can also uh, get by on sheer strength. And that's, I think that's what these two do. I think if you can get in there and defend yourself and fight and win, then uh, then uh, you're proving yourself and you should be in there. But why is, yeah, you're looking at sheer strength. And, and yeah, because of, I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want to, offend anybody, but when I use the word retard strength, I mean, you know, but that's what it is. It's strength without discipline. It's these two guys are going in there and just, just without any sort of regards for themselves or anybody else, I mean, they're just throwing people around. And and, and I know wrestling is a business, and I know all of you going to sit up there and go, Rick Diesel, you're a dumbass because it's a business where somebody can get hurt. But there has to be some sort of skill. I mean, it's just crazy strength. That's all they have. Well, I mean, then I think uh, there has to be some kind of natural ability. They're maybe not learned, but you know, as, as long as I think, as long as they're defending themselves, as long as they can fight and win. You know, now if if they were just going out there open mouth drooling and just getting beat up, you know, maybe then somebody should step in and. And, and lead them out of the ring, but I mean, I think as long as they can uh, put up a good fight, you know, it's just like uh, people are against uh, women fighting men. I, I'm all for it. If they if they think they're tough enough to get in there and fight a man, then then have at it. Well, not that I'm comparing women to retarded people or anything. I, yeah, but I have seen some women who look like men. Oh yeah. But here here's my thing. Well, Angelina Jolie. I don't think she looks like a man in the face. Uh, maybe now. Now that she's got too, she's got too skinny here lately. I, I don't know. But anyway, um, well, who 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 assumes the responsibility if one of these guys get injured? Well, then uh, it's um, I guess it's the AIWF and whoever their guardian is. Maybe I don't know. I mean, it's 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 a it's a tough call to make. But then at the same time, does the AIWF um, discriminate against these people who, you know, they obviously have the mentality enough to want to get in there, want to compete, you know, and and if they have the ability, then who 
who are they out of yet to say, well, no, you can't do it. I agree. Let me. Um, so, so let's talk about now. When you came back, uh, let's let's do a little bit on Brian Danzig. We've we've surfed around the uh, uh, the AWF for a little bit. And let's take some time to talk about you, Brian Danzig. Right. When you came back to the AWF after the injury from Chains, you were a totally different Brian Danzig. T tell us about what what made that happen. Well, there was uh, a lot of different factors to it, uh, one of them being, you know, that I was coming back from the injury, I didn't know quite how much I could withstand, I want to kind of get my feet wet in there, see, see how I could do it, but then, uh, you know, like I said, there's a, a lot of different reasons that was one of them. Another one was uh, I was just getting sick and tired of some of the guys in the back, not all of them, some of the guys in the back. You know, and some of the internet smart marks talking about how Brian Danzig, he does hardcore because he can't wrestle. You know, if you do hardcore, that means you can't wrestle. Which, in a lot of cases, is true. You know, you get these uh, guys out here, they got a brother or a cousin or whatever. You know, the promoter you know, has a friend who they want to be a wrestler, but they don't want to train. So they put them in some cutoffs and give them a cookie sheet and say, here, you're our hardcore champion. And, you know, and I was getting tired of being lumped into that category, so I was like, look, all right, you know, no black, just regular wrestling, straight up, old school, like, I can do it. And, and I proved it. You know, went out there, did the old school wrestling thing. Did I like it? It, 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 was, it, was, it was fun for a while. It got really old because it's not me. That's just not what I'm about. So, and, you know, and then... Uh, my last match with Chris Tenney, you know, got my head busted open on the ring post. Once I, once I felt that blood on my face, I was like, okay, that's it. It's this time. It's time for the real Brian Danzig to come back. Was you, um, what, especially with your gimmick, I'll say it. That's right. Um, with your gimmick being what it was. Right. Uh, the old school, were you concerned during the draft? That you may have got picked, got gotten picked by, let's say, classic, or because they're more old school type, right. or even C4W, who uh, who is, you know, how all those mask guys. I and mean, then you had Anarchy, mm -hmm. at, which was more of a Brian Danzig type company. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And uh, yeah, that was a concern of mine. And um, that's, uh, like I said, uh, it was uh, a, another factor of. Of why that's one of the other factors of why I went old school is because at the time you know there was all these affiliates coming up that were old school you know there was uh, ZCW they're very old school yeah, and then classic championship wrestling you know all these groups and NCWA had, yeah NCWA all these groups had that old school mentality and there wasn't really a place for the old Brian Danzig but then here comes Anarchy and you know, and it's like, okay, here's you know, here's my chance. Here's a uh, here's here's a home for Brian Danzig, a place where he belongs. And that's you know, and I didn't want to, and, and that's you know, again, another reason for the old school thing. I didn't want to do a watered down version of the old Brian Danzig. You know, go out there with with the look, but then just not doing real hardcore because that's what Brian Danzig's all about. He's not a, about going out there with a a uh, paper thin trash can and some cookie sheets and call himself hardcore. That's no way he's Oh God, is that not the worst? I mean, it is. is. All right, that, it is. you know, that's a, that's a good segue into what pisses Rick Diesel off. <laughs> what pisses Rick Diesel off this week is these poor, pathetic groups out there. Like I said, I don't talk about, I, I try to talk about just the affiliates, so I'm going to clump all of them into one. So if you fit in this category and you know you do, then maybe you need to step back and take a look at yourself. But these groups will go out there and they'll take these paper thin cookie sheets and 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 they do some of the goofiest, most retarded stuff. I mean, you know, they, yeah. they, they claim to be hardcore, but they go out there and and they do stuff that's just stupid. Yeah. It's just I, I, I guess you could call them backyarders, I guess you could call right. them uh just underground, I don't know. Whatever you, you, you call them what you want to, but 
But the AIWF has been in business for 17 years. Right. Damn it, they do that because they've been doing something right. They now are up to 12 affiliates across the United States and, and one in England. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's because they do something right. So here's what pisses Rick Diesel off this week. Idiots who don't know what they're doing but claim they do. So let me, have, let me get your thoughts on that. AIWF20, Hotmail.com, subject Rick Diesel Show. Um, I can't think of a whole lot else to cover. Oh, I do want to say one thing and get your opinion on this. On, right. on uh, September 28th, and we'll actually get into more of this uh, later on on another episode of the Rick Diesel Show because I'm sure we'll have another one before the show. On September 28th, Clayton Fitness Center, NCWA, presents the very first annual Ivan Koloff Tag Team Tournament. Uh -huh. And Ivan Koloff's going to be there, Barbarian Consequences Creed from TNA, and Jake the Snake Roberts. Right. Alright, give me your opinion on the Jake the Snake Roberts thing. Because I know he's been getting a lot of bad press. Lately. Right. And, and, I, and I'm not trying to freak you guys out there at the NCWA. Alright, just chill. We're not going to rip Jake Roberts apart because I'm actually excited about meeting him. Because uh, he is a legend. But he's been getting a lot of bad press lately. Right. In your opinion, deserved or not? Well, maybe, maybe he's getting... Maybe they're focusing a little too much on the negative and not on the positive. The fact that he is a legend in this business, an innovator. But, uh, I mean, the videos speak for themselves. I mean, you know, if you're going to, you know, and, and nobody's perfect. You know, I mean, and, and everybody knows about his past demons. If you and, didn't see Beyond the Mat, then, you know, watch it and you'll understand. Yeah, exactly. But uh, that's, that's the thing about Jake is, should the people come out to see him? Yes, definitely. But what are you going to get? Are you going to get the good Jake, the one who's going to go out there and, and, uh, and give the audience everything they got, or are they going to get him falling on his face? And, but but hey, you know what? I think you should come out to see. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's worth the price of admission just to see what see happens. See which one shows up. I mean, <laughs> exactly. either, either one's going to be entertaining. I'll shake both of them's hands. I don't care. <laughs> All right, Brian, I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Hey, uh, I'm sorry you can only get one corner of Brian Danzig's house. It's your loss. Uh, but for the Rick Diesel Show and AIWFWrestling.net, I am Rick Diesel. I'll see you next time. Well, there you go, wrestling fans. A great interview with Brian Danzig at his home. And, and you know what? It was an interesting home that I got to go through down there. And, and I did not ask about any locked doors. I did not go in any areas that I thought that uh, I didn't need to be in. Because uh, it, it is an interesting place. But I tell you what, that's going to do it for this episode of the Rick Diesel Show. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll get us another guest and do it real soon. I, my, my goal is, and I think I may have it set up, I'm going to really try hard to get as my special guest on an, episode, an upcoming episode of the Rick Diesel Show, the Nigerian Nightmares. So I'm going to try uh, over in Elkin to see if I can't get them to sit down and calm down long enough to do an interview. Don't forget... Send your emails to AIWF20 at Hotmail.com, subject to Rick Diesel Show. And just like we did with my friend Mike there, we will talk about what you want to talk about right here on the Rick Diesel Show. We'll see you next time.